Week two's homework. Problem number two out of seven on uh, your MyLab. Bilardo Manufacturing is considering a lease to acquire new equipment. The useful life of the asset is 15 years. The terms are the lease. A Bilardo can lease equipment from Citibank for $3,500 per year over a 12-year period. The lease does not contain a bargain purchase option. There's no transfer of ownership clause. Should this lease be considered an operating or capital lease? So what you have to do is go through the steps, the checkoff steps of answering yes or no, um, on behalf of determining whether a lease is an operating lease or capital lease. So the lease transfers ownership of the property to the leasee at the end of the lease term. It tells you it does not. The lease contains a bargain purchase option. It does not. The lease term is greater than or equal to 75% of the estimated economic life of the property. So the estimated useful life of the property is 15 years and we are leasing this over a 12 year period. So 12 divided by the 15 is 80 percent. So it is greater than the 75 percent of the economic life. The present value has to be 90% of the fair market value. So, the answer is, does it transfer ownership? No. Lease contains a bargain purchase option? No. The lease is greater than or equal to 75% of the economic life? The answer is yes. The present value of the minimum lease payments are, not, are, are greater than or equal to 90%. We ha don't have enough information to determine that because we don't have the, the interest rate to discount the present value. So number three is the answer. It's a capital lease for the leasee. Um, because it satisfies at least one of the capital criteria. Problem three. On January 1st, Sheldon Sales Company entered into a lease agreement to lease a piece of machine machinery for a period of four years. Clicking on our terms of the lease, the machine is specialized for Sheldon's business needs it has a sales price of $52,230 and its useful life is nine years with no guarantee residual value. The $11,188 of annual rentals are due at the beginning of each year. The lease does not contain a transfer of ownership or a bargain purchase option. The DBE 4% uh, implicit rate is known. The cost of the equipment is $52,230 it's fair, as its fair value. There are no material uncertainties regarding future costs. Requirements. Determine if the lease, classif if the lease classification. Prepare the journal entries in the first year of Sheldon sales. So to figure out whether it's a lease, we're told, one, it doesn't transfer ownership. The lease contain, does not contain a bargain purchase price. Is the lease term greater than or equal to 75%? So we are basically in our problem, we are told that uh, we are leasing the machinery for four years 
and the useful life is 9. So that certainly is not 75%. Finally, we have to figure out the present value. And the present value is we're going to take the $11,188 of annual rentals at the beginning of each year. We use the 4% implicit rate over a period of four periods, four years. So if you go to your Excel spreadsheet and use the present value, you put in 0.04 for 4%. The number of periods is four. Put a minus $11,188 as your payment because you're making a cash flow. You're paying uh, for the lease. And the type is one because it's at the beginning of a period. If it was at the end of the period, you would use you use blank for type. But because it's an annuity at the beginning of a period, you would use one. The present value is forty two thousand two hundred and thirty six dollars, which is um, what percent of that 42,000 over the 52,000 is 80.9 percent, not 90 percent. Therefore, your answer is that it is an operating lease. The lease does not meet capital lease criteria. It's an operating lease. It is a straightforward Debit to prepaid rent, credit to cash for the uh, annual payment, and then debit rent expense and credit prepaid rent. Next, di Digital Solutions signed a four-year lease at the beginning of the current year. The lease equipment has an economic life of eight years and a fair value of $1,730. So the economic life is eight years. Here's our leasing uh, information. Winona is required to pay $480 at the beginning of each year. There's no purchase option. And Winona must return the equipment at the end of the lease term. Winona's digital, no, digital knows that the leasers Implicit rate is 9%, but recently borrowed under a four-year loan agreement at 8%. So you're going to use the lower of the two. You're going to use 8%. Determine if the lease is capital or operating. The lease transfer ownership of the property to the leasee, it does not. There is no bargain purchase option. The lease term is not greater than or equal to 75% of the economic life. However, the present value of the minimum lease payments are greater is greater than the 90% of the fair market value. The present value of the lease payments are $1,717. Again, go into your present value table, put 0.08 for the 8% implicit rate, four periods, payment is minus $480 a period, again, use type 1. The $1,717 of present value divided by the fair value of $1,730 is 99%. Therefore, this constitutes a capital lease because we've met at least one of the capital criteria. Steel Food Mart Incorporated as leasee enters into a lease agreement on July 1, 2016 to lease mobile refrigeration equipment from Dunbar Products. The cost of the equipment to Dunbar is $170,000. The following information is relevant to the lease. The non-cancelable lease is five years with no renewal options. There's no transfer of title. Payments of forty-two thousand are due beginning on July first. 
So the lease is five years. The fair value of the equipment is 194,456. The economic life is five years. So already we know that five years lease is greater than 75% of the estimated use. It's equal to uh, or greater than the 75% rule. Um, so the lease is five years and the useful life is five years. That's 100%. The steel food mart depreciates similar equipment it owns on a straight line basis over the economic life. There are no executory costs related to lease. There are no material uncertainties as to future costs. And collectability is reasonably assured. Prepare the journal entries for 016 and 017 for Dunbar products. So we are preparing the journal entries for the, for the leaseor, not the leasee. Before completing the requirement, identify the present value of the lease payments. So, go into your present value table on Excel. Put in .04, number of periods 5, the lease payments of minus 42,000, and the type is 1. And for those of you who did not take our first course, on the time value of money, go into formulas, financial, and go into your present value formula, and you'll see this will be exactly what was on the screen. The rate is 04, the period is 5. Payment is minus 42,000. Notice the type here, the definition. Payment at the beginning of the period equals 1. Payment at the end of the period equals 0 or leave blank. And there's your answer right here, 194.455 or 194.456. So one, transfer of ownership, no. Lease contains bargain purchase option, no. The lease term is greater than or equal to 75% of the economic life, the answer is yes. The lease term is five years. The economic life is five years. That's 100%. Present value of the minimum lease payments is greater than or equal to 90% of the fair value. We calculated that the uh, present value is 194456000 and the fair value was the same. Therefore, it's 100%. Therefore, we have a capital lease. So, this is a sales type lease for the lease saw because there is a deal of manufacturing profit. You will notice that the cost on our books was 170,000 and the um, fair value is 194,000. Therefore, the sale revenue side is going to be the 194. And the cost of goods sold side is going to be 170. Interest receivable on December 31st is going to be recorded. Our lease receivable and so on. We'll go through these steps slowly. So by preparing the journal entry for Dunbar at the inception of the lease on Jan July 1st. Exclude any lease payment from this entry. So the first thing we do is we record the lease receivable. 
the least receivable is we are transferring our equipment out of inventory, which was valued at 170000 So we're crediting inventory of our equipment, and we're putting into a, an asset. We're creating a lease receivable. The reason why the lease receivable is not the same as the inventory, the inventory is valued, remember, um, in the problem, the cost of the equipment is 170000 So that's what's on our books. That's what we credit as, against our inventory account. The lease receivable is not the same amount. The lease receivable is going to be the present value of the lease. The cost of goods sold gets a debit for the same amount of the inventory value or cost. We also recognize sales revenue for the present value of the lease as a credit. So here's your gross profit. Your gross profit is going to be 194,456 minus 170,000. So that's the entry you make on July 1st. Now, because the first payment is due July 1st, we're going to debit cash and credit lease receivable for the first payment. We are not recording the interest on the first payment. That's done on December 31st. However, payment's not due. So what we have to do is accrue the interest. And the way to accrue the interest is to build your effective interest method that is in your um, text and on your PowerPoint slide. So essentially, your effective interest is going to be at first 194000 as your starting point. One And your monthly payment is forty two thousand. Your interest, the first payment is if we don't pay interest on the first payment. The principal is forty two thousand applied to the one ninety four present value. So then, the second payment made on January 1st of 2017 is going to look like this. There's going to be a payment for $42,000. The interest in the problem is... The implicit rate is 4%. So the 4% is going to be calculated on the new balance. Now keep in mind that our first entry... Reduced our lease receivable by 42000 which is exactly what this spreadsheet did. We reduced the lease receivable by the 42000 The new interest 
is going to equal 4% times the present value. Six zero nine eight. The principal applied to the present value is going to be the difference between the forty two thousand total payment and the interest, and therefore a carrying value of the lease receivable is going to equal the present value balance minus the principal, and that's the effective interest rate method. So what do we accrue for? Basically on July 1st, um, it's uh, I believe six months. So, or one half the year. So we take, um, basically what we did was we took the 194, 456 starting Minus the 42,000, which is what we did here. Okay. Times 4% times half, which is 3,049. So essentially, this entry happens on January 1st, but the entry we have to book is December 31st. Therefore, you take half of that. which is 3,049, because that's for a full year. We only want to accrue half because it started in July, so it's six months. That's where the 3,049 comes from. So you're going to debit interest receivable because the leasee owes us half a year of interest. And we're going to credit interest revenue. We're going to recognize the interest for the six months per gap. Now on July 1st of 2017, when the payment is due, we're going to get cash of 42000 I said January 1st. It should be July 1st. We're going to cash of 42000 We're going to credit interest revenue for half the year. We're going to credit the interest receivable that we booked in 2016 because they're paying a full year's worth of interest of which half of it was accrued in the prior year and the other half is recognized in 017 and we're going to credit lease receivable for the principal then at the end of December 31st we're going to accrue another interest for 2331 uh, for the six months because on December 31st, our effective interest will be 0.04 of this balance here. Four six six two divided by two is 2331. So, slowly go over this again. Figure out your present value. Go to your table or your Excel spreadsheet and figure out your present value. Present value um, basically is your lease receivable. You're creating an asset. 
the least C owes us the least receivable of this. This is the sum, the present value of the sum of the um, lease payments. So that's what the lease is worth to us. We're going to take the lease off, we're going to take the inventory of the equipment off our books and basically move it into lease receivable, but it's on our books for 170000 we're going to recognize the cost of goods sold for 170000 which is the same as the inventory cost. And we're going to recognize revenue for 194456 On July 1st, there's no interest made. The first payment is purely cash. You get debit cash and credit receivable. To do the next entry on December 31st, you have to be familiar with your effective interest method. So... You're going to take your present value as your starting point, reduce your present value by the first payment made on July 1st of 2016. You're going to take 4% of your carrying value of the of the of 152.456. That represents a full year, 12 months. So from July to December is six months, so GAP requires us to recognize or accrue six months of interest. Interest revenue is then the offset. Then on July 1st of 017, you're going to make a full payment. It's, they're, they're going to make a full payment. We're going to get cash up to $42,000. we are going to recognize only half six months of interest receive a revenue um, interest receivable is going to be credited because we had it on our books as a debit and then we reduce our lease receivable by thirty five thousand nine hundred two dollars again in December 31st use your effective interest table to calculate the interest related to the payment accrue six months and record that on July 1st of 2018 you'll be making a journal entry like this again of course your numbers will shift this really tests your knowledge of the effective interest method more than lease accounting